and their aide, Colonel North, who did not wear his Marine uniform when he worked for the secret government. To raise money for the Contras, the secret team turned to right-wing governments that could do favors for the United States and receive favors in return. The King of Saudi Arabia doled out a million dollars a month. The Sultan of Brunei coughed up $10 million that was misplaced through a White House era. The secret government also encouraged the fundraising efforts of General John Singlaub. Relieved of his command for insubordination in 1977, he now runs the World Anti-Communist League. I represent hundreds of thousands of Americans who are sympathetic to your cause and want to help. Here at home, wealthy right-wingers were solicited directly by Oliver North. Some of them were told their contributions would get them invited to the Oval Office. Conservative activist Carl Channel, who later pleaded guilty to conspiracy to defraud the government, worked directly with Colonel North, pumping donors like investor Joseph Aboyle. I take it your encounters involved, invariably involved, both Mr. Channel and Colonel North. And maybe Channel took you to North, and then you met with North, and then subsequently you would meet with Channel. But in a sense, they worked as a team. In a sense, yes. Uh, Mrs. Garwood, is that true in your instance as well? I would say that's a fairly accurate description. All this was being done to advance the president's policies, but it wasn't enough. To get around the law, the White House then enlisted the services of something called the Enterprise. The Enterprise is, is the uh, group of, of companies that uh, Mr. Hakim formed to manage the uh, Contra and the Iranian project. Who controls the enterprise? I exercised overall control. General Richard Secord has been in and out of covert operations for a quarter century. One of the first Americans to fly secret missions in Vietnam, he also helped run the CIA's secret war in Laos. Secord became a major Pentagon figure in foreign military sales, especially to the Shah of Iran. That's where he met this man, Albert Hakim. Not only was I presented with an opportunity to help my country, the United States, and my native land, Iran. But at the same time, I had the opportunity to profit financially. Albert Hakim was Secord's partner in the enterprise. Born in Iran, he made millions selling American-made arms to the Shah, often relying on bribes and illegal payoffs to ease the way. Now he handled financial matters for the enterprise. Like any good business, the enterprise was designed to make money. Am I correct, Mr. Secord, that from December 1984 until July 1985, you were engaged in selling arms to the countries for profit? That's correct. Then, at the direct request of the secret White House team, the enterprise brokered American arms to the Ayatollah Khomeini. Beyond Secord and Hakim, it grew to include a shadowy network of arms dealers, fraudulent companies, and secret bank accounts. The enterprise was, as Senator Daniel Inouye put it, a shadowy government with its own Air Force, its own Navy, its own fundraising mechanism, and the ability to pursue its own ideas of the national interest, free from all checks and balances, and free from the law itself. Here's just one example of how the enterprise worked. With the full knowledge of William Casey and Oliver North, Secord and Hakim control secret bank accounts in Switzerland that receive those contributions from private citizens. The money was then funneled to the Contras. One donor was Joseph Coors, the millionaire beer tycoon. Coors met directly with Casey, who referred him to North. I told him that I was interested in, um, uh, in seeing what I could do, and I asked him for his recommendation. And did North, uh, subsequent to the meeting, provide you the Swiss bank account name and number to which your payment should be made? Yes, he did. Joseph Coors deposited $65,000 into the secret account, but that was peanuts compared to the arms deals. Secord purchased 1,000 missiles from the CIA for $3.7 million and sold them to an Iranian middleman for $10 million. On that one transaction alone, after expenses, the enterprise made a profit of five and a half million dollars, almost 200 percent. Its overall profits on the sales to Iran may have been as much as 15 million dollars. 
You did, in fact, use some of those proceeds, approximately, and correct me if my recollection is wrong, about three and a half million dollars for the Contra effort in Central America. Yes, sir. But most decision. of the money never reached the Contras, Your including eight million dollars remaining today in a private Swiss account. Operating in secret, the enterprise was free to put profits above patriotism. They even sold arms directly to the Contras at a huge markup. If the purpose of the enterprise was to help the Contras, why did you charge Calero a markup that included a profit? We were in business to make a living, Senator. We had to make, we had to make a living. I didn't see anything wrong with it at the time. It was a commercial enterprise. Well, I thought the purpose of the enterprise was to was to aid Calero's cause. Can't I have two purposes? Right. I did. While profits were being made, lives were being lost. Iran has used missiles supplied by the Enterprise to fight its war against Iraq. That war has already lasted more than seven years, as many as a million people killed or wounded. And in Nicaragua, the Contras use weapons from the Enterprise against civilians. It's a terrorist war they're fighting. Old men, women, children, are caught in the middle, are killed deliberately, as the Contras use violence against peasants to pressure their government. Thousands have died. Even as the hearings were taking place in Washington this summer, a Contra raid in Nicaragua killed three children and a pregnant woman. As the casualties mounted, the secret government in Washington knew that the Contra leaders were not such noble freedom fighters after all. Colonel North learned that from his own liaison with the Contras, Robert Owen. I was but a private foot soldier who believed in the cause of the Nicaraguan democratic resistance. Owen sent a secret memo to his boss. He reminded North that the chief Contra leader, Adolfo Calero, is a creation of the United States government. And he warned North that those around Calero, quote, are not first-rate people. They're liars, greed and power motivated. This war, he said, has become a business to many of them. Owen's judgment has been supported by disillusioned rebels who quit the struggle in disgust with Contra leaders. People who have never dirtied their boots, people who never went to the field, people who don't even know how to pick up a rifle, pretending being a facade for the CIA, and whose only concern was making money. Alberto Sewer is a former Contra officer who once won the personal congratulations of Ronald Reagan but then he discovered corruption among the Contras. They bought shoddy goods and put them at high up prices. They bought low-grade grains like rice and beans and corn and sugar and salt and put them up uh, for sale or build them for themselves at the highest prices. Uh, they did the same with ammunition. They did the same with rifles. All this, the contempt for Congress, the defiance of law, the huge markups and profits, the secret bank accounts, the shady characters, the shakedown of foreign governments, the complicity in death and destruction. They did all this in the dark because it would never stand the light of day. Secrecy is the freedom zealots dream of. No watchman to check the door, no accountant to check the books, no judge to check the law. The secret government has no constitution. The rules it follows are the rules it makes up. So William Casey could dream that the enterprise might take on a life of its own, permanent and wholly unaccountable. The director was interested in the ability to go to an existing, as he put it, off the shelf, self-sustaining, standalone entity that could perform certain activities on behalf of the United States. Are you not shocked that the director of Central Intelligence is proposing to you the creation of a organization to do these kinds of things outside of his own organization? Counsel, I can tell you I'm not shocked. They were willing to literally put the Constitution at risk uh, because they believed somehow there was a higher order of things, that the ends do in fact justify, are justified by the means. That's the most Marxist totalitarian doctrine I've ever heard of in my life. Senator John Kerry of Massachusetts, a veteran of the Vietnam War, is a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. If you can have a retired general and a colonel, uh, you know, in uh, Mufti running around, uh, making deals in other countries on their own, uh, soliciting funds to wage wars to overthrow governments, and hide it from the American people 
So you have no accountability. You've done the very thing that uh, uh, James Madison and others feared most when they were struggling to put the Constitution together, which was to create an accountable system which didn't have runaway power, which didn't concentrate power in one hand so that you could have uh, one person making a decision and running off against the will of the American people. Ultimately, what could possibly justify it? The fight against communism, of course. This nation cannot abide the communization of Central America. We cannot have Soviet bases on the mainland of this hemisphere. It means dirty wars and dirty tricks, lying in deceit. These operations were designed to be secrets from the American people.